Then you think of another one of the, the leftist religions, as I call them, because these are, these are faiths of sorts. People worship these things. They're crying in the streets. They're willing to smash in windows when somebody's speaking. They're possessed. You think about the climate change stuff, right? There are people that are, are slashing tires in Europe. They think the planet's going to be over in 10 years. Let me tell you something. <laughs> they have told us the planet was going to be over in 10 years, just about every 10 years, okay? Go talk to your parents. Go talk to your grandparents. Talk to me. When I was in school, we all had to watch Al Gore's uh, Inconvenient Truth. And when we watched it, we saw the polar bears, and they were drowning, and they said, if you don't do something, kiddos, we watched it in health class, you're all going to be dead in 10 years. They really liked that number 10 because of global warming. That was it. It was all you heard everywhere. Global warming, global warming, global warming. And then that never happened, and actually the polar bear population has doubled since. So oopsies. Now they don't say global warming anymore. They say climate change because before global warming, if you talk to your parents, they said that the world was going to freeze to death, and that was called global cooling. Yeah, so they showed all the kids statistics and explained to them that if they didn't get involved, the world was going to cool, and everything was going to freeze over, and they were going to be into an ice age. There was also the ozone layer scare. There was, and I think this one's the worst, uh, generation acid rain, that the oceans were gonna become so acidic that it was just gonna pour acid. You're raising your hand, were you that generation? Very scary, I'm glad you survived it. And I'll tell you how she survived it, because it never happens, it never happens. But in the process of scaring you and telling you that you're gonna die in 10 years, making you believe that you can control it, if you just slash a couple of Range Rover tires, the government takes trillions, trillions. They are taking it, they are taxing you, they are making you believe that you can change the weather like you are Storm from X-Men. All you have to do is commit to this faith and it never happens. And they never get in trouble for being wrong. I don't know where Al Gore is today. I'd like a word, I'd like a word. So told us Florida was gonna be completely under by now. And it's not, Florida is still actually a state. So you wonder why are they doing that? That's another weird category. What do all of these things have in common, right? They rely so much on the youth to carry these torches. You now have middle schoolers, you see this walking out of school because of climate change, you just leave and start walking out. Um, my mother would have whooped my butt if she had seen me walking out of school talking about climate change. So I thought about that, and I remember I spoke to a friend of mine, Dennis Prager of Prager University, <laughs> wonderful man. And I said to him, what is this? What do all of these things have in common? Modern feminism, uh, transgenderism, climate change. What is it, like, how, what, what is the left after? And he said to me, Candace, it's just chaos. And I took a second and I digested that for years because I was such a student when I was at Prairie U of trying to really understand uh, what they get with all of this division, all of these radical ideologies that actually when you look into them don't make any sense. Why do this? Why not go back to the 90s? People were so happy in the 90s, guys. Let me tell you, oh, the 90s. Family Matters was on TV, the Winslows. It was a wonderful, wonderful decade. Uh, and then I thought about it and I realized that Dennis, on that one point, he wasn't right. It's not just chaos. It's not just chaos when we're talking about these topics that they're after. It's not just chaos. It is Machiavellian. It's really evil. It's really evil and they have thought through it. And the one thing that all of these categories have in common is that what sits at the middle of them is family. Listen to this. All of these things attack the family unit. Now, I don't know if you guys are learning about this in school, because I don't think they would allow you to learn about it in school, but when you study the works of Karl Marx, when you study what Marxism is and what socialism is, of, of trying to turn America into a socialist country, an ideology that has killed 100 million people in the last 100 years, speak to a Venezuelan about what socialism is, right? How quickly a country that should be the richest country according to their oil resources, now the average person has lost 30 pounds and they're starving 
because they voted in socialism. Uh, speak to a Cuban. Cubans don't mess with socialism. You're not finding yourself a Cuban socialist because they know what it did to their country. They were swimming over to Florida, swimming over trying to escape socialism. When you study the ideas of socialism and Karl Marx behind it, the number one thing that he teaches and what the government understands is that you have to collapse the family unit. It must be destroyed. What stands between the government and absolute power is the family unit. And that makes sense to me as a black person a lot because of what has been done to black families since the establishment of welfareism.